Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. When an incredible football player is consistently overlooked for inclusion in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, We often hear several reasons for this absence. Things like, "Eh, he was okay, but he never led the league in anything. Or, he was good, but he never won a title. Or even, he was great for his team, but he was never an all-pro or an MVP. In this episode of When Football Was Football, we'll look at the impressive career of Marlon Pat Harder who accomplished all the superlatives that have been utilized as reasons for keeping a player out of the Hall of Fame. During his eight-year NFL career with the Cardinals and the Lions, Harder won three NFL championships, topped the league in scoring three times, was the NFL's MVP in 1948, and was selected as an All-Pro no less than six times. In short, he was everything that one might look for in a Hall of Famer who played fullback and linebacker back when players went both ways, and also handled the kicking chores for some of the best teams in NFL history. To understand the depth and prominence of Pat Harder's career, let's begin with his introduction to football at Milwaukee's Washington High School. During his senior season at Washington, Harder scored 143 points in just eight games to establish the city record. He was also named to the All-State team twice. In addition, Harder was the captain of the Washington basketball team and also won the Wisconsin High School Low Hurdles Championship. So it only seemed natural that Harder would then enroll at the University of Wisconsin in 1940. Of course, at that time, freshmen were not allowed to participate in varsity sports. But Harder became an instant star during the 1941 campaign, his sophomore year. That year, he led the Big Ten in both rushing and scoring. The 72 points stood as a Wisconsin record for the most points scored in the season until broken by Rufus Ferguson almost 30 years later. Purdue head coach said of the versatile rusher, Pat Harder is the best sophomore fullback I have ever seen. In 1942, Hardner partnered with the great Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch to lead the Badgers to an 8-1-1 record, with the only blemish being a controversial 6-0 loss to Iowa when officials ruled that Harder's plunge for a tying touchdown fell just short of the goal line. Still, the Badgers finished third in the national polls at the end of the season, and Harder was named an All-American. Despite his offensive accolades, Harder was also remembered for his defensive abilities, according to columnist Tom Butler of the Wisconsin State Journal, who said, Harder epitomized consistency and did so many things well, including playing a rough and rugged game at linebacker. Randy Coughlin, another writer for the State Journal, added, Harder is the best back I've seen at Wisconsin in my lifetime. You must remember Harder's wonderful qualifications are not all on offense. It's his defensive play and his team play. He's just one of those naturals that are hard to find. Harder was also responsible for one of the most enduring chants heard at high school and college football games even today. After a game against Purdue in 1941, the Journal and Courier newspaper in Lafayette, Indiana stated that Pat Hit him, Harder was in a class by himself. Probably the best fullback in the land, Harder ran the pigskin 30 times during the afternoon and picked up 171 yards. His speed, shiftiness, and tremendous drive 
were a source of agony to the Purdue 11 from start to finish. While that writer had picked up the now famous chant from the Wisconsin fans of hit him again, hit him again, harder, harder, which of course was aimed in praise at their pile driving fullback and linebacker, Pat Harder. And now try and get that chant of hit him again harder out of your head for a while. Due to the ongoing hostilities during World War II, Harder entered the Marines in 1943 and gave up his final year of collegiate eligibility. However, before he departed for the service, Harder was named the most valuable player of the 1943 College All-Star Game after he scored on the 33-yard run and the 37-yard pass reception in a surprisingly easy 27-7 win over the Washington Redskins and quarterback Sammy Baugh. In addition to his pair of touchdowns, Harder also booted two extra points. While in the service, Harder was selected as the second overall pick of the 1944 NFL Draft by the Chicago Cardinals. Although Harder could have returned to Wisconsin for one more season of play following his discharge, he elected to try pro football in 1946 with the Cardinals. Harder was part of a revitalized Cardinals team that recently shook off a 29-game losing streak to finish 6-5 under coach Jimmy Councilman, which was the team's first winning season since 1937. Although not a huge man at 5'11 and 203 pounds, Harder enjoyed a lengthy pro career, playing with the Cardinals from 1946 through 1950, and then concluding with the Detroit Lions from 1951 through 1953. His impact with the Cardinals is immediate. In 1946, he rushed for 545 yards and just 106 carries, which was 5-point yards per attempt, good for second place in the National Football League behind Bill Dudley. Harder also grabbed 11 passes for another 128 yards, allowing him to finish the season with the second-best average in yards per touch with 5.8. Then in 1947, the Cardinals made a wise, wise decision and turned over the place-kicking duties to Harder and his value to the team soared. He was near perfect on his extra points in 1947 with 39 of 40. In 1948, he was a perfect 53 for 53. And then in 1949, he was 45 for 47. With his rushing and receiving touchdowns, along with his efficient kicking, Harder became the first NFL player to score 100 points in three straight seasons. He was the NFL's leading scorer in 1947 with 102 points, as well as in 1948 with 110 tallies, and again in 1949 with 102 points. In 1947, Harder was part of the Cardinals' dream backfield, which was the first time that a professional club started four college All-Americans in the same backfield. Harder teamed with halfbacks Marshall Goldberg and Charlie Trippi, along with quarterback Paul Chrisman. Later, Goldberg switched to defense and the talented Elmer Engsman added his speed to the backfield. Both Trippi and Engsman scored a pair of touchdowns each as the Cardinals knocked off the Philadelphia Eagles 28-21 to capture the 1947 NFL title. Harder added two extra points to that final tally. During the 1948 season, the Cardinals were even more dominant, finishing the regular schedule with an 11-1 record before falling to the Eagles 7-0 in the championship tilt marred by a blinding snowstorm in Philadelphia. During that season of 1948, Harder was selected by UPI as the NFL's most valuable player after scoring 110 points, including that perfect 53 for 53 in extra point attempts and he added seven field goals and six rushing touchdowns. He was once again very solid running the ball, picking up 554 yards in 126 attempts and grabbing 13 passes for another 93 yards. His blocking for Trippi and Angsman was superlative, and his rushing efforts were good for sixth in the league, with Trippi and Angsman finishing second and third respectively for the powerful Cardinals running attack. For some reason, the Cardinals traded Harder to Detroit after the 1950 season, and he continued to excel for the Lions. 
Carter posted one of his finest individual performances in the 1952 National Conference title game, which was a victory over the Rams. In that game, Carter picked up over 100 yards on the ground and scored 19 points in the Lions' 31-21 win. With Carter on the roster, the Lions picked up two NFL championships in 52 and 53, leaving Carter with three titles overall for his career. In addition to his MVP award and the numerous All-Pro honors, Carter was also selected as a member of the All-Decade team for the 1940s. He finished among the top 10 in the NFL during several seasons in categories such as most extra points made, most points scored, most extra points attempted, most field goals made, highest field goal percentage, most rushing attempts, rushing yard, rushing touchdowns, etc. Still, with all these gaudy accomplishments, Harder remains absent from the Hall of Fame. In 1992, shortly after his death, the Wisconsin State Journal surmised as to why Harder did not receive more recognition, stating, Pat was one of the NFL pioneers who helped popularize pro football. His career ended before the glitzy television boom. The old timers are now dwindling and the new breed doesn't remember him. It's certainly questionable as to why Pat Harder has not reached the pinnacle of professional football recognition by being selected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But maybe someday, sometime, hit him again harder. Thank you for spending some time with us today and please join us next time as we take a look at the Cardinals' first West Coast tour, which occurred in the mid-30s. We'll call it the Cardinals' Magical Mystery Tour. Enjoy the holidays. And we hope to see you back here again soon. Thank you. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.